Hey folks, thanks for taking a look at today's blog. Uh, we're going to be looking at some frame stuff here today. Um, what we're going to be showing you is a couple scenarios here when you're drawing your frame profiles, getting a different ink condition. Uh, so what we're referring to here is I have one that's kind of already done here. Uh, let me show you how Solid Edge by default will basically create your profile. So something to this effect, and you kind of get these saddle joints where it's kind of a, just a Boolean subtraction. And that's more of just basically taking a, uh, like a pipe cutter, hole saw kind of deal and just cutting straight through a pipe to get that saddle. Uh, a lot of people are using laser machines to get these profiles. So a different in edge condition without having to do too much work is useful. So I kind of kind of a workaround uh, to do that with. Uh, so you, instead of getting a scenario like this, you get more of a profile that ends up looking like this. So and I'll show you how to get to this point. Uh, these are just inserted part copies of the original frame. Uh, so these are actually, you know, linked to the original frame profile. Uh, so if I go back into uh, my frame and just make a modification, you'll immediately see that uh, I have access to the 3D sketch here that I used to create it with. And let's just change the dimension. So just to show you what I'm referring to, I can close that. And if I go back to my final frame assembly, which is this basically a copy of that, um, if I uh, update this, we kind of automatically get the same. So it's basically linked. Uh, it just allows me to create a part, and I'll show you how we got to this step. So let me uh, create a new assembly here in a frame. So new ANSI assembly, and we're going to go into the frame window to do this with. So I'm going into frame, and I'm going to create a just a 3D sketch, kind of like what I did on the first one. Uh, just create a real quick profile here. Throw some geometry on the, oops. There we go, sorry about that. Lost my lock. All right, so let me put that angle profile back on here. There you go. Looks like I got a sketch under a sketch. Get rid of that. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that. And let's put some geometry or some dimensions to hold this with. And last angle dimension. All right. So let's make our changes. Let's make that 36. Let's make that 24. 10 and 45 finish that corner off all right so there's our profile i'm going to go close my sketch here i'm going to turn that sketch into now some frame components going to do something similar here it's going to keep the defaults uh let's just going to do a miter corner on that one which looks about right uh then we're also going to do same size pipe which is kind of gives you the worst case scenario because uh, it gives you the largest kind of saddle profile uh, on the geometry, so you can kind of see what it does here. Uh, so let's go in and show you how you get to what I did with the uh, frame, frame final. All right, so uh, if I try to open up these parts by themselves, what's going to do is basically take me to my frame component library, which uh, is technically nothing more than just a little four inch long round diameter, two inch by one five four wall thickness. So if I open that up, that's what I'm gonna get. But I need to make modifications to the geometry as created. Uh, so how we do this in Solid Edge, so these are all stored in Solid Edge. So technically we can save these out uh, to um, individual parts and relink them back at the assembly uh, to create a second assembly of a frame, but you have a little more control over it. And of course you have the link like I showed you in the first one. So how do we do that? Uh, it's real simple. Uh, oops, did I close my frame? Nope, oh, got to close my frame so I can save it. Let's go ahead and save my assembly first. Let's call this one frame two. 
Done deal. All right, so uh, let's uh, now show you how the individual components can be saved. So that would be under File, Save As, Save Selected Model. So we'll just go through and do the same kind of naming convention. Just call that four. And I also added a little shortcut, so I don't have to keep doing that. I just added a radial menu, so I can just save it right here without having to keep going to my Save As menu. All right, and the last one, six, done. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out. Let's just start a new assembly. And we'll just populate those with those parts that we just popped in there. So four, five, and six. So how do we put these in here without having to reassemble these? Ah, very simple. All right, so if I just hit Shift and go through and select all these items, uh, then right-click on them, we get this occurrence property. So here's the values that kind of position these. Uh, so right here, we can just kind of go through and just make these zero and update those. And everything just goes right back to where it's supposed to be. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and just save this as... Frame two, final. All right, and again, this is linked to the original, so if I go back and change any sizes and shapes on the original, this will update. Uh, but we're just kind of worried about some conditions here. You know, things typically what you would do, you would never put uh, try to butt that together. You'd obviously have some uh, gap in there, so we don't need to really modify anything too specific, but we could, you know, just at the assembly level, uh, you know, we do have rounds and chamfers that we can apply uh, to our part. Oops. There we go. So we can get our chamfer on there, be able to put a well bead around there. Uh, you know, that's 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 easiest scenario you have is just a 45 degree corner. So let me go ahead and get out of there. All right, so uh, in a scenario like this is something you'd probably want to clean up because in the side view, it ends up looking something with this kind of big overhang and things like that. Again, if you're using a hole saw, that's all great, but if you want to laser cut that. So let's go into this pro uh, part right now. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I want to double click it and edit in place. All right, so let's go ahead and just show you kind of how we can get some different scenarios here. Uh, under surfacing tab, so next to the home tab surfacing, uh, we have this command called ruled surface. All right, so we have different conditions for this ruled surface, uh, tangent, normal to face, natural. A couple of these work most of the time. So, uh, you know, normal to face, let's see what this is going to look like here. Uh, see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a replace face on that now because that's 90 degrees to that surface. Let's pop that in there. All right, so that ends up looking more. So let's go back to the side view and turn off my shading here. And again, show you kind of what we're looking at here. So we ended up with more of a profile that looks like that uh, versus that. So I can close and return back to my assembly level. And we end up getting a profile that kind of looks like that. I do notice, um, you know, if I, if I was going to put a chamfer on here, which, which, which we could, uh, it would end up... failing like this earlier so because I kind of got that same scenario uh, so I'd probably go back to the part and maybe end that change that condition um, but we do have some other tools in here because I want to show you uh, you know with a saddle look uh, if I come over here and do some inspection check your interference uh, that pipe versus that pipe we get no obviously none uh, I do the same thing over here Oops, and So we get this kind of small little sliver intersection here, which we which we can remedy easy enough. Again, under features, uh, we do have a, a subtract option here at the uh, assembly level. So I could basically just say, okay, I want to take that part and use this guy to kind of boolean it away. Uh, once we do that, we recheck it, and just to show, yeah. So no interference on that part now, and. Uh, it's it's good to go. 
So I uh, go back to that part and add a, add a chamfer on there or a different type of in condition. Uh, let's on this side, let's go something slightly different. And this will kind of give us the same scenario, but we're going to use a different, uh, we're going to do a ruled surface on this one. Uh, let's go with, uh, flip that natural the other way. All right. So let's begin to replace that face to that profile, close and return back to our assembly. And again, we end up with something that fits very nicely. Uh, I believe this one uh, will, if I throw a chamfer feature on this outside edge profile, I don't think I had issue with this one earlier. Oh, maybe it was. Well, it is the same kind of condition but, as this one. Uh, again, I would just have to go in and do some modifications. And uh, once I'm ready to uh, take this into draft just to get my final components, uh, but this was typically more set up to be able to have this ends uh, cut on a laser machine more so than just cut with, with, like, a, with like a pipe profile. So I uh, hope this helps. Um, you know, um, Hopefully uh, that little ruled surface and replaced face uh, in those different conditions can get you closer to a, a, a true laser cut pipe profile than you were with just a true saddle joint. All right, so thanks for uh, taking a look. If you have any more questions, pull for, uh, feel free to contact us at Swoosh Technologies. All righty, folks, thanks. Uh, have a good one.